Hi everyone, today I'm going to read three stories. Fern and Horn, The Moon Inside, and The Mouse Who Ate the Moon. We'll get started with Fern and Horn. Fern loves to draw flowers and butterflies, birds and bees, caterpillars and orange trees. Can I draw with you? asked Horn. Of course, says Fern. Do you want to borrow my favorite purple crayon? I want to borrow all your crayons, says Horn. But Horn thinks that his flowers look like purple pancakes, that his caterpillars look like striped socks, that his birds look like witches' hats. I can't draw flowers, grumbles Horn, or birds or stripy caterpillars. Draw whatever you want, says Fern. Elephants, says Horn. I'm good at drawing elephants. The problem is that Horn's elephant is big and ferocious. It loves to stomp on Fern's flowers and swallow her butterflies, birds and bees, caterpillars and orange trees. Uh oh, says Horn, what happened here? You know what happened here, sighs Fern. You should keep your elephant on a leash. Luckily, Fern's imagination is as big as the earth, as big as the sky, as big as the universe. Fern loves looking at stars. They sparkle and glow from a million light years away. Sometimes she hears them singing. Fern also loves making stars. She cuts out bright morning stars, fiery shooting stars, and even starfish. She sprinkles stardust everywhere. Fern hangs the stars so high that not even a ferocious elephant could reach them. Can I make some stars too? asks Horn. Of course, says Fern. Do you want to borrow my scissors? Yes, answers Horn. But Horn thinks his stars look like confetti, or giant snowstorms, or macaroni, without cheese, of course. I can't make stars, grumbles Horn. Your scissors are way too slippery. Do you want me to help you? asks Fern. No, says Horn. He has another idea. He tears and rips. He glues and snips. Horn makes an enormous wild polar bear. The polar bear gobbles up the bright morning stars. It devours the fiery shooting stars and the starfish. It licks up every little speck of stardust with its bright pink tongue. Uh oh, says Horn. What happened here? You know very well what happened here, sighs Fern. You need to teach your polar bear some good manners. Luckily, Fern's imagination is as big as the earth, as big as the sky, as big as the universe. She thinks and thinks. She sketches and draws. I know, says Fern. I will build the biggest, strongest castle in the world, a castle that will stand up against polar bear gobbles and elephant stomps. Hmm, do you want me to help? Fern calls out. But Horn doesn't answer. He has disappeared into thin air. He has another, better idea. Fern builds a magnificent castle with turrets in a dark dungeon. In front, there is a deep moat where a hungry shark swims in circles. Meanwhile, Horn pulls out a long, green, scaly thing from the bottom drawer of his dresser. He puts it on and sneaks out into the yard. At almost the exact same moment, a great bat-winged, fire-breathing dragon attacks the castle. Fern is ready. She knows what dragons like to eat. Chocolate chip cookies. She throws a handful of cookies at the dragon. The dragon is delighted. He is so busy devouring the cookies that he steps into the moat. The shark bites the dragon's big toe. Uh-oh, says Fern. What happened here? Ouch, 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 says Horn. Your shark bit my big toe. Do you want another cookie? asks Fern. I'm going to build a rocket ship next, says Fern. The fastest rocket ship in the universe. 
I'm going to make a monster from outer space, says Horn, with three eyes and four arms. <laughs> the next book I'm going to read is called The Moon Inside. Every night, when the dark entered the house, traveling slowly down the walls and over the floors, Ella grew afraid. She would take her mother's hand and lead her from room to room. In each room, Ella turned on lights to make the dark go away. One evening, when dusk was just beginning to settle over the house, Ella reached again for her mother's hand. The sun is leaving now, Ella said looking out the window. Yes, said Mother. The sun belongs to the daytime. The sun makes me happy. Yellow is my favorite color, Ella said. But now it's almost nighttime again. Mother opened the door and stepped outside. Do you see anything in the night sky, she asked. The moon, Ella said, spotting it low on the horizon. She watched. Fireflies danced over the lawn. They're glowing, she said, pointing, like the moon. She listened. It's quiet, she said. She heard the crickets chirp and the wind in the trees. Ella and her mother sat on the porch. They listened some more to the sounds of the night. I like it here, Ella said. Me too, said mother. Before they went back into the house, Ella looked at the golden moon. It's my favorite color, only quieter, she said. That night, she turned on fewer lights in the house. She wanted to make sure she could see the moon in the night sky. As Ella lay in bed, she knew that she would wake to the bright sun in a brand new day. But right now, she was happy that the night belonged to the moon, quietly glowing through her bedroom window. The last book I'm going to read is called The Mouse Who Ate the Moon. One evening, Little Mouse peered out of her hole. She was looking at the moon. The moon is beautiful, she said as she settled down to sleep. I would love to have my very own piece of the moon. The next morning, when Little Mouse woke up, she saw something that she had never seen before. A piece of the moon had fallen from the sky. My wish has come true, she cried. Little Mouse ran to get a closer look at her piece of the moon. It smelled delicious. Perhaps I can eat it, said Little Mouse. It smells so good. I'll just have a tiny nibble. So she took a tiny bite, then another and another, and just a tiny bit more until she had eaten half of it. Oh no, cried Little Mouse. Now the moon won't be round anymore. What's the matter, Little Mouse? asked Rabbit. I've eaten some of the moon, said Little Mouse, and now it won't be round anymore. Nobody can eat the moon, said Rabbit. Well, I just did, said Little Mouse. Little Mouse walked past Mole's house. What's the matter, asked Mole. I've eaten some of the moon, said Little Mouse, and now it won't be round anymore. Nobody can eat the moon, said Mole, laughing. Well, I just did, said Little Mouse. Little Mouse sat in her hole, sadly looking at the remains of the moon. It began to get dark. Then she heard Rabbit and Mole. Little Mouse, come out, they said. We want to show you something. Little Mouse followed Rabbit and Mole to the top of the hill. They sat and looked at the starry sky. Slowly, something shiny appeared behind the trees. It was the moon. It was big and it was round. Little Mouse was overjoyed. Look at the moon, she cried. I haven't eaten it after all. So, Rabbit, Mole, and Little Mouse sat under the stars and ate the other half of Little Mouse's moon. It was delicious, and the big moon lit up the sky behind them. Because really, nobody can eat the moon. 
the last, the last story for today, and I'll see you again next week.